Welcome to the NEO operational video series for software version 3.9. These videos are designed for targeted instruction to get you up to speed quickly and simply. This video targets virtual pallets. The pallet system has been overhauled and improved. In software 3 for 3.7 and earlier, there are specific pallets that only store specific fixture data. These are the intensity, position, color, beam, and edge pallets. This data cannot be used in fixtures where the data has not been stored. For example, if you have two moving lights and one of them has data in the position pallet but the other fixture does not, then only the pallet can be used for the first fixture. In 3.7, there are also generic pallets where data in one fixture can be applied to any fixture generically. This is most useful for common data elements like color. In software 3.8, a new system of virtual pallets has been created. Virtual pallets allow a pallet to apply to any fixture regardless of whether it's been recorded in the pallet or not. You just need a fixture to have data for that pallet. So specific pallets now have the option of being virtual pallets. This allows them to function as generic pallets but smarter. So I'm going to set up my system so that we can take advantage of the fact that I only have one monitor so that this will help people that have multiple monitors as well as single monitor folks. So under view, we're going to go into the dockable frame. Now my channel grid is replaced by an open framework that we can populate. Now in order for that to be available, you may first need to go into System Properties, Appearances, and enable advanced docking system. If you do, you'll have to restart for that to take effect. So now that we're in the dockable frame, I'll open a new view of channels, the classic view, so I've got a floating window, and as I maneuver this around, my dockable icons appear. So I'm going to dock that up at the top, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, color palettes. So I'm going to go into palettes and say color and what we're going to do is dock that into my dockable frame. Um, earlier when I did this it was set to 10 by 10 for 100 and just in this small space uh, 10 rows was way too many so I went into options I said set grid size I just left it at 10 there. I set it at 3 instead of 10 and now I have 30 so it's a little a little more manageable. So I'll page down and we can see that to show this example I have three fixture types. So if I select channel 101 this is an RGB AW fixture. I've got 10 of those. Starting with 111 I have the Philips Silicon PL Profile 1 which is an RGB white fixture. And if we look at the 120s here, I have patched up some VL, uh, VL 1100s for this fixture. There's the, uh, there's the header. So we're going to start with color. So what I'm going to do is grab fixture 101 and go to full. And we're going to pick a color here in my color picker and I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of amber and a little bit of white. So this is the blue that, that I like. So we're going to say record and I could say color one enter or I can just click here on my first color and I'm just going to label this blue. So the question is, what can we do with this? Now, if this were a traditional, um, a traditional specific palette, we could only use it on fixture 101 because that's the only fixture where it's been stored. However, I'm going to hit next, and I'm going to come over here and click, and now we can see that I can apply it to another fixture of its like kind. So let's just apply to everybody. So if I do 101 through enter, I'll grab all of that fixture type and now everybody's blue. Great. 
Now what happens if we go to a different fixture type? So I'll do 111 full and we're going to click on blue. Now let's see, it seemed to do what we expected it to, but let's see what it really did. So it gave us uh, the RGB values plus it gave us white. Now remember this is an RGB W A fixture, so white and amber, and this is an RGB W fixture. So it can't do anything with the amber because there's no amber to apply it to, but everything else did apply, so that's fine. But what if the reality sets in and we say, you know what, we really can't get the um, it, the colors really not matching. We really need to sort of tweak the colors a little bit for this particular fixture type in order to get a better match. So let's just say we need to add a little red and green and maybe take out a little bit of white and that's going to match much better. Great, so all I have to do is say update and I'll click on this color or I could have just said color one enter and now we have new data for this fixture so red and green are just below 30 percent blues at full if I come back over here red and green are at 14 and 20 and blues at full so now the question is when I grab another PL and I put it in this color palette what's it going to do well what it does if we take a look is it is it saw that there was specific data for another fixture of the same type. So it used that data rather than use the more generic data coming from the only other fixture that has data which is 101. So this means if I do 111 through enter to grab all of the PLs and I go to apply this color palette then they will be in the color that comes from one of its own type of fixtures. So that's great. So they are a little bit smarter. Now let's go to our movers. So I'll grab 121, turn it on, and we're going to put that in blue. Now what did it do here? So this is a CMY color mixing system rather than a subtractive rather than additive. And it's going to convert the RGB values to CMY. It doesn't have amber, it doesn't have white, it doesn't have any way to do anything with that data, so it just did a pure direct conversion for from CMY. And again, let's find that we need to tweak this a little bit to sort of make this uh, look a little closer, and that's fine. And we'll just update this palette for that fixture. And again, if I grab all of the VL 1100s and apply that color we can see that it took the same information from its own fixture type before it looked toward any other data. Now let's go a step further. Let's say these four fixtures here 127 through 130 are pointing uh, they're going to spend the most of the evening pointing at a, a, a different wall. Maybe it's a very different color. Maybe it's orange and everything else is more wood, turn, wood tone and the colors just don't look the same. So we're going to make a little bit of an assumption that we need to tweak this and I'm actually going to tweak it quite a bit so that it looks quite different on screen and this is actually closer to a lavender on screen but you'll understand the point. Uh, by doing this. And let's say this is a better blue, or this is better values for the blue color for those four fixtures only. So we're going to update that color for these and now that color is blue. So if I grab all of my Verilites, I hit release and I'll do select previous to grab them again and we'll go to blue and we see that some of them have gone to the blue that has been stored to them specifically. Some have pulled from their other fixture type and now we have a much much smarter system. So the way it works is it will look to its own data in the palette first. If it has none it will look to data 
from a fixture of the same type. Then if it has none, it will go to the first fixture in the list, which in this case would be 101, and it will apply that generic data to, to those fixtures. Sorry to shift over here, but the rest of this video will show a similar example using 3.9 due to the improvements and changes from 3.8 to 3.9. So these are the virtual palettes and they are able to be used for any attribute family. If you go into the options, you'll see the virtual palette uh, active button, which has a check mark when it is turned on and active. This is turned on for color, but it is not turned on for any of the other attribute families because it is believed that color is a very generic uh, attribute family where this can work and help you and apply to many situations where things like position, since the fixtures are hung in different locations, the same pan tilt values often do not work. So if you're trying to point two fixtures down center, they're not going to have the same data. So they can be turned off. I'm sorry, they can be turned on in the options pull down, but by default, they are turned off. Thanks for watching this Neo operational video for software version 3.9. Go to the Strand website for many more videos on neo programming and operation.